Hello and welcome to the Miscast table. My name is Mons, and yesterday Games Workshop released their third Old World Almanac covering the shooting phase. So now we have information about how three of the game's four phases work. And therefore I think it's time that we summarize everything we know about the rules for the Old World so far. And this is going to be a very short and concise video, mainly focusing on the changes that they have made for the Old World compared to the rules for Warhammer Fantasy. So I'm going to assume here that you as a viewer have some knowledge about the game of Warhammer Fantasy before watching this video. And first of all, the phases themselves have changed. Before we had the movement phase, the magic phase, the shooting phase and the close combat phase. Instead we have the strategy phase, the movement phase, the shooting phase and the combat phase. And so far we have gotten a glimpse of every phase except the combat phase. And I think that maybe we should start with the most controversial phase, which is the strategy phase. And this was part of the first post that Games Workshop made about the rules for Warhammer the Old World, and it definitely ruffled a few feathers. Because so far, this phase is the biggest change they have made compared to the older editions of the game. And we did a longer like reaction video about that, where we discussed the post more in depth. And you can find the link to that in the description down below if you're interested. But in the strategy phase, you now perform a few actions that were previously made in the movement phase. You perform stupidity tests, you rally fleeing units and stuff like that. But you can also cast certain types of spells in the strategy phase. And not only can you cast spells in this phase, you can now cast spells in every phase of the game. Enchantment and hex spells are cast in the strategy phase. Conveyance spells are cast in the movement phase. Magical missiles and vortexes are cast in the shooting phase and assailment spells are cast in the combat phase. And it seems like some spells still have their range specified in inches like in the older editions, but other spells use their wizards or characters command range instead to determine the range. What the command range actually is, how it works and how far it reaches is unknown at the moment. They also added a sub-step in the strategy phase called command where you can use certain characters, special abilities or items. And he did provide us with an example of this. And this item is called the Falcon Horde of Fredamond. During the command subphase of their turn, if they're not engaged in combat, this character may attempt to use the Falcon Horde of Fredamond by making a leadership test, using their own unmodified leadership. If this test is passed until the start of your next turn subphase, enemy units cannot use the fly x special rule. And the addition of the command subphase together with the changes to magic are the biggest step away from the original Warhammer fantasy that we have seen so far. And many people are upset with this change and the big step we have taken away from the Warhammer fantasy that we know and love. For me personally however, I think that the magic system of Warhammer fantasy was probably the weakest part of the game. I think that the system needed a change to be honest, and I do think that Warhammer Army's project took a big step towards improving the magic system, but I still think that even in VAP that the magic is the weakest part of the game. But if this specific change that they have made to the old world will be better or worse, no one knows. So I guess we'll just have to wait and see. But if we move on from the strategy phase onto the movement phase, we can see that here the changes are much less drastic. But I think that the biggest of them is that now if you form a unit without any ranks in what's called a marching column, you get triple movement but no rank bonuses. Charges are also resolved by rolling 2d6 and picking the highest, while swift stride units get an extra d6 to their charge range. And this is quite similar to how charges work in Warhammer Army's project and gives a larger advantage to faster swift stride units compared to in 8th edition for example. Other than that, most things pretty much stay the same. And I said this before in other videos that I think movement and close combat is the greatest things about Warhammer Fantasy in my opinion. And seeing this glimpse of the rules for the movement for Warhammer the Old World makes me really hopeful about the game. And finally we have the post about the shooting phase that was released yesterday. And first of all I must say that I'm really happy to see that they kept the ballistic skill system. Which bodes really well for them keeping the weapon skill system for the close combat. 
And if we look at the shooting, rolling to hit works pretty much the same as it did in older editions. You also get negative modifiers for pretty much the same thing. Cover, shooting more than half distance, uh, as a short reaction and so on, you get a minus modifier to hit. The big difference here is that if you have a ballistic skill of 6 or higher, you get to re-roll missed shots. Another change from 8th edition is that now low strength attacks cannot wound high toughness targets. A 1 strength attack can wound a toughness 6 target on a roll of 6, but can never wound a toughness 7 target. However, this is nothing new, this is the way it worked in 6th edition for example where certain low strength attacks could not wound high toughness targets. Overall, I would say that the biggest change to shooting in Warhammer the Old World compared to in 8th edition is that strength doesn't seem to be connected to armor piercing. In 8th edition, any strength increase above strength 3 resulted in one armor piercing. So a strength 5 attack, for example, had two armor piercing. But in Warhammer the Old World, the strength does not seem to affect armor piercing. Instead, you have an AP stat on every spell, weapon or attack. For example, the Screaming Skull Catapult have an AP of minus 3. And I have heard different opinions about this change. Some people say it's getting too close to 40k and it's gonna be difficult to keep track of the AP of all weapons. And others argue that it opens up the design space for more creative weapons. For me personally, I think it's quite a minor thing and I don't have any major opinions either way, to be honest. But in short, that is all the major changes compared to the older editions that we know so far. And I have to be honest, I think some of the changes are a bit bigger than I expected them to be. But I also think that from what I've seen so far, I think it looks pretty good. And as long as the combat phase isn't a complete miss, I'm going to become really excited about this game and for 2024. But that are the changes and my thoughts on them, but I really want to hear your thoughts as well, so please write them in the comments down below. That is all from me, see you all next time, bye.